Hello, everybody, and welcome to our show. This is our uh, show from powwows.com, Powwow Nation Live, and we will start the show in just a few minutes. Please take a moment and share it with your friends. We'd love to get, have some more people on. And also, let me know where you're watching from. Uh, post in there where you're from, and uh, tell me tell me where what powwow you're looking forward to the most when we get back to doing it and dancing together. I call it saving money by customizing While we wait, we're we'll watching some videos really from the 2014 it. Gathering of Nations powwow. Hope you're enjoying those. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Gowder, and I am with Powwows.com. Thank you for watching. This is the show we do here on Powwows.com each week, Powwow Nation Live. So thank you for joining us, and I'm super excited about the show tonight. Tonight, I'm, I will be talking with my good friend, Patrick Brooks. He is a traditional dancer um, and been powwowing for years. He's a veteran, and he has just started a new Facebook group that I can't wait for him to tell you more about called Natives Helping Natives. So we're going to share some, we're going to reminisce, tell some old powwow stories, and talk about the history and meaning of traditional dancing and, and what it means to him and kind of how he got involved. Um, so I hope you will enjoy that, whether you're new to powwows or an old timer. Um, I think there's going to be something that everybody will enjoy and Patrick telling some of these stories. So appreciate his time tonight. Um, before we get to that interview, I do have some really cool announcements, um, but I do want to read some of the comments. I see Craig Locklear is missing the Lumbee homecoming. Um, that is a great dance. Love going up there. Um, been a few times. I uh, do miss that one for sure. Uh, see people from Michigan and California, uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Florida, um, some more North Carolina and Pembroke. All right. 
Texas. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me get right to a couple of announcements because I know uh, you, you all, uh, I think you're going to enjoy this interview. First, um, I want to say thank you to the guys over at Indigenous Radio. Uh, they have a interview show that they do on Facebooks on uh, Wednesday and Sunday nights, I believe. And so they had me on the show last night, way past my bedtime. <laughs> they, they start streaming at uh, 11 o'clock Eastern. Um, but it was super fun. Loved hanging out with those guys and getting to talk about some powwows and kind of the uh, how powwows got powwows.com started and some of that. So thanks for those guys for having me on. Check them out over at Indigenous Radio on Facebook. Um, let's see. Got some new folks. Uh, new Mexico's watching. St. Louis. Hello, hello. Roxanne from Illinois. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Um also, I want to say a special thank you to our supporters over at Patreon. Thank you so much for to our Powell Nation supporters. These are the folks that are making contributions to powwows.com and letting us do some really great things, such as we are actually hiring new writers now. So um, before I get to thanking the patrons, if you are a writer interested in working with us at powwows.com, please check us out and uh, send me your information. We'd love to talk to you. Um, but yeah, thank you to some of our new supporters, TW. Anna K, Howard S, Angelo C, Jerry B, and longtime supporters that have been supporting us for months, Vincent J, Robin E, Thomas F, Chuck E, and Dennis H. Thank you all. And you can find more about that over at powwownation.com. Um, all right, I see Patrick is in the house. So if you have questions for him, um, he, he will take his questions when I play the interview. We recorded this yesterday. Um, and so, yeah, shoot your questions over there. He'll be able to answer you in the chat, which is super cool. Also want to say a special thank you. Um, I get emailed at people wanting to help us at powwows.com and they're not able to join Patreon or or they want to do something else. So um, Leslie um, from Ontario sent me an incredible, cool card. I love this. It's from uh, the Health Foundation up there in Ontario. Love the artwork. That is, let's see, can I get it to show up better? There it goes. That is super cool. And she sent us some gift cards um, to some places up there in Canada, Safeway, IGA. Thank you, thank you, Leslie. I really appreciate that. That's going to help go a long way um, to some of the powwows.com staff when we start traveling again and uh, you know help some of our writers and video video people and webcasters. Um, that that will make a real difference. Um, you know, we've got a great staff here at powwows.com, and I, I try to support them in every way I can. And of course, you know the. the not never ever able to pay people what they're worth, but we try, try to do our best. So when we have something like that, that we can give them a little extra, um, I really appreciate that, that and helping those folks out. So thank you. Thank you. Um, for those gift cards, they will go to use. Uh, all right. Dallas, Texas watching. Awesome. Um, Barb from Manitoba, Canada. One of the powwows I am definitely missing is Manitowabi. Um, should be getting ready for that here in just a couple of months. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we're, they're not going to be able to have it again this year. Um, Robbie Muskogee here. Awesome. Let's see. We've got Navajo nation watching. All right. Tennessee. Um, Pedro, thank you. And Angela from watching all the way from Germany. That is so cool. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I'm not sure what time it is. I'm always curious when people are watching from other countries or are you staying up late or are you getting up early to be with us? Um, all right. So, um, other announcements. Um, oh, we do have, so I'm sporting some of the powwows.com merch. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it, it's a, in the shape of a buffalo with several tribe names. Um, we also have some masks over at powwows.com. There's our native strong mask with, uh, again, some tribal names there. And one of my favorite things we have um, recently, the new tumblers. Here's that, and here's the back side of it. Oh, there we go. So right now, through the end of the month, these are on sale 15% off. And let me give you the coupon code for that. There you go. So use that code over on our shop and you can save 15% on our merch. Again, that's another way you can help support us over at powwows.com. And I really appreciate that. Hope you enjoy the merch. Um, all right. And so I want to get to um, get to this interview as soon as we can. And thank you, Patrick, for tuning in tonight. And uh, I know he'll uh, love interacting with you all. Um, so Patrick is a veteran, like I said, and a longtime dancer. Um, let me show you, uh, let's see, I got a picture of him. Uh, he's a combat veteran and he has uh, participated in powwows for years. 
Um, and he actually is a uh, been head dancer and head staff at lots of powwows. Um, one of my favorite pictures of traditional dancers um, I ever took was of him at Gathering of Nations. So here is a shot of him. Uh, um, and he'll actually tell the story of this photo in the interview. Um, but that was a super cool moment. Kind of caught him off guard there. Um, but he's got some uh, some great skills there in dancing and love his colors and his outfit. So without further ado, here is um, our interview with Patrick. So joining me this week is Patrick Brooks, Brooks a traditional dancer. Um, you probably you may have seen him on social media. If you haven't, make sure you go follow him. Um, he does some amazing live videos um, and talks. Um, super funny and engaging guy. Love watching his videos. Uh, Patrick, thanks so much for your time and being here. Ah, uh, Yahweh, Yahweh. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, bringing me on. Yeah. Um, so let's just for anybody who hasn't followed you on social media, let's just start with tell me, you know, who you are and where you're from. Oh, thank you. Well, my name is uh, Patrick Little Wolf Brooks. I'm of the Haudenosaunee people, the Tuscarora Nation in upstate New York. And um, I, I now reside here in New Jersey, right outside of New York City and see caucus. Awesome. And so when did you, when did you really get started dancing? Is this all? Oh, man. <laughs> I've been dancing. I think I've been dancing since my feet can move. Yeah. You know, uh, I come from a long line of dancers of my family and traditionalists. Um, you know, my family weren't really known about powwow dancing. We were longhouse people. So we did a lot of our smoke dancing and uh, war style dancing during longhouse. But as I got a little older, my grandfather was uh, close friends with Jonathan Wendy Boy. Yep. And I fell in love with his grass dancing as a kid. I mean, absolutely. It, it, any grass dancer tell you that's who we follow is Jonathan Wendy Boy and the Wendy Boy family. Um, so I became a grass dancer and been dancing every in powwows ever since I was about four years old, four or five years old. So, and once you get a part of that, that powwow life, you never really get out of it. It's just, yeah. a, it comes a part of you. Yeah. I, um, I, we had the VHS tapes of like red earth and stuff and John and Wendy boy on there watching, trying to copy his move, Abe Conklin straight dancing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One of my coolest yeah. powwow moments, and I don't remember when this was, the Gathering or, or Morongo or somewhere, um, I finally got to, to meet Jonathan and I uh, went up to him and said, hey, I'm, I'm you know, my name's Paul. He's like, yeah, I know who you are. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. You know, it's completely fanboy, you know, it was so cool. Um, yeah, great guy and uh, love watching him dance still. Um, saw him in a powwow, well, back when we still had powwows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's what, so I've been asking people this too. Um, so, you know, this last year has been just crazy. Um, what powwows have you missed the most? What are you What are you most looking forward to when we, when we finally get back to this? Oh, man. Um, you know, even though I've danced at some of the biggest powwows, I actually miss the smaller powwows, the little homey ones, the little traditional ones. Penn State Powwow here on the East Coast, is, a lot of people don't know about Penn State Powwow, but it's been going on for a while. But it's one of the most old school traditional powwows that you ever run to, uh, um, John Sanchez runs it from out here. He's a Apache uh, fella, um, but he's really old school, feeds all the dancers, uh, makes sure all the dancers get paid. He wants to make sure you got a little money in your pocket for gas money. So he does, he does day money for everybody that comes out. That way everybody has gas money to get back and forth. And it's just a good time because it's one of the first powwows of the season. And I miss that powwow something fierce because, you know, uh, especially this year, we've lost so many of our elders uh, and some that we didn't we didn't expect to see, uh, we didn't expect to lose at such a young age. That power I definitely miss. And of course, you have to miss Crow Fair, and uh, at least going to go visit Gathering Nations. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Gathering one that you know that's a highlight of the year. Um, but yeah, some of these small ones too, and just being able to sit and hang out with friends, um, eat some good food. Yeah, that's that's, that's definitely the stuff I'm missing too. Um, the big ones are great and they're fun, but yeah, sitting, you know, even like after the dance, that's the parts, you know, that I really. Oh, like. absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. Doing, doing the fun after the pow people don't, people come to the powwow and they think the powwow ends when, when they, that last, when they, they take out the flags, but that ain't the way it works. The yeah. powwow really begins that first day, right after we dance that first time. That's when the powwow really gets going right after that first day and everyone gets to get around to everybody. And when we get out of our powwow attire or sitting around campsite, that's when the powwow really gets started. Yeah. 
one of my favorite ones to go to it, it, up in North Carolina. It's, a, it's at a campground. So afterwards, we'd all just walk back over to the, where the campers were, whether you were in a tent or camp or whatever. And yeah, there'd be food out and just, yeah, that was, that's awesome. You got to come hungry because yeah. someone's feeding you. <laughs> sure. For sure. All right. Well, so let's talk a little bit about your dance style. Um, when did you, when did you start dancing traditionally? Something you've, that's the style you've always danced? No, actually, no. Um, you know, I'm a traditionalist. I, 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 well, I should say I practice a traditionalist because uh, I'm still learning. Um, but I do believe in the old ways of the way dances are gifted. And being holding the Shoni, uh, the style of men's traditional, the style in the powwow mindset of men's traditional or northern men's traditional was not of my people. And it's a warrior style dance. So I didn't start dancing men's traditional, the style I dance, that's the northern traditional I dance now until about, I'd say about eight years ago, uh, shortly after I got back from my second tour to Iraq. Uh, when I got back from Iraq, uh, I was hurting pretty bad from PTSD. And a friend of mine out west uh, in Lame Deer, Montana, brought me over to do ceremony, do some sweat lodge, try to heal me up. And his family uh, actually brought me in as a men's traditional dancer. They brought, they gifted me the style of men's traditional and, and gave me that honor to dance that style. And ever since then, for uh, I've been dancing men's traditional. All right. And for those who might not be familiar with that style, what, when we're watching powwows, what, what are we looking for? What's a men's traditional dance? You know, how do okay. we teach that out? Well, men's traditional dance is the oldest style of dance. And men's traditional, if you say men's traditional, you, it, it, it sort of kind of encompasses all of the first styles of men's dance all over the Indian country. Uh, basic back before colonialism, when we used to dance uh, and, and give celebration to the rain and the corn, the ground and the earth and the flowers. So what you're looking for more likely is a bustle. That if anyone had to say anything about you, it would be a bustle. And that would be that beautiful thing there behind me with the eagle feathers. Uh, the mystery traditional dance is a storytelling dance. So when we dance, we imitate the things that we've done or the things that our ancestors have done. And uh, traditionally, a mystery traditional dancer is a warrior. It's a warrior style dance. So if you watch a mystery traditional dance, he gets low, he gets high, he gets, you know, he does certain looks. And if you really watch him, he's telling the story of a hunt or a battle or something like that. And, for me, that speaks to me, especially with someone that deals with PTSD and my traumatic brain injury from Iraq. I, when I dance, I'm telling the story of maybe when I lost my soldier or when I was clearing buildings in Iraq or, you know, or when I was on my hunts with my grandfather. So it's such an interpretive dance. A lot of dancers will tell you uh, they don't know what's going on when you start getting out there. You, you just start dancing and you just start going to storytelling mode and your body, your face, everything is telling that story in some fashion. Nice. And originally, I know now with, with the way powwow styles are, you know, these styles travel around the country, um, but that's not really, this style isn't really native to where you are really. This is, this is a plain style dance, right? Yes, absolutely. It is a plain style dance. We have a version of the men's, uh, of a men's traditional dance, but we call it, we have war dances in the Haudenosaunee people, the Iroquois nation, which is just played by a different drum. Same, uh, same story behind it is it's a storytelling uh, style of dance. Uh, you know, uh, and the smoke dance, which is now starting to be recognized within the, the bigger powwows like Gather of Nations. I remember the first time we, we did smoke dance to Gather of Nations and they were just blown away. They had never seen this fast through the dance because um, our feet move three times faster than a men's fancy dancer does. <laughs> but um, absolutely, our storytelling is through our battles. That's why it's called the war dance. And the smoke dance is the war dance just sped up really fast on a water drum. All right, and that other thing behind you, the, uh, with the macaw feathers there. Oh, yeah. Uh, a little bit about that. Well, this was a gift to my late wife that passed away uh, from a friend of mine. And this is a medicine fan. Uh, at the time that she got this, um, uh, she was dealing with stage four cancer. Uh, and um, a friend of ours, a, a, an amazing fan maker and beater, um, decided to gift this to Emily. Unfortunately, Emily never got a chance to dance with that powwow. 
So uh, when my, my grief time is over, which is about a year, um, and I get back to powwow, that'd be the first thing I'll bring back into the circle with me where she can dance along with me. That's awesome. That'd be great. Um, and so for men's traditional dance, what kind of things are you carrying in your hand? Oh, man. Um, and you, like I said, I'm, I'm, I am a practicing men's traditionalist. So the things I carry in are normally things of war or things of battle. So normally I, I, I carry a, a dance stick with an eagle claw on it which I don't have with me right now. I actually have it in storage right now in my, my cedar chest. But um, that, or some, some dancers call it acoustic. And traditionally acoustic was um, a, a, a long rod that a dancer would, or a, a warrior would carry to knock their, knock their opponents off without hurting them just to show them that they were brave. So a warrior would ride up to a war party as fast as he could, knock off their biggest warrior uh, with just a disrespectful type of thing, just to knock them off, laugh in their face, showing you that I'm bigger and badder than you are, and it is a uh, a test of bravery. So I, I carry my acoustic and I did carry my fan. My my fan is sorry, a, 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 my fan is a sort of a storytelling uh, mechanism. So my when I dance with my fan, if you watch the way I dance, sometimes I hide behind my fan that represents me hiding in the bush. Or I think you got a picture of me a while back of me hiding behind yeah. my fan. I'll and make sure I show that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, during that dance, I was actually dancing, uh, which I didn't even know you were standing there taking pictures. Uh, <laughs> during that, that dance, I was actually in the zone where I was telling a story about uh, when I was clearing buildings in Iraq and that, that fan was my door. So I was peeping around that door and you got me as I was peeping around that door coming to take out the enemy. So that fan just so many different symbolizations behind the things that we carry from our bustle to our roach to uh, the, which is the porcupine piece I have on my head, the porcupine hair piece I have on my head to even the face paint that I, I carry. And, and so we, we talked a little uh, about what your outfit is. When you're dancing, whether it's um, contests or whatever, and you tell me what is it for you as a dancer? What does it mean for you to be able to dance and, and Kind of how does that fit into your your way of life? Well, you got to remember, not too long ago, our dances were outlawed. We weren't allowed to dance. My ancestors weren't allowed to dance. My grandfather wasn't allowed to dance. It was even at a time that uh, you were hoping that your kids were born with lighter skin. So they didn't have to claim being native. That way they wouldn't have to worry about so much of the evil that was going on at that time. So... You know, you wanted lighter skin. You didn't want to represent being native uh, because all these things were outlawed and we were discriminated against so highly. So when I'm dancing, I, I feel like I'm dancing for a time they couldn't. Uh, sort of like how, uh, you know, the same reason I vote because our people were the last people to, that got rights to vote. And that's the reason I vote as well is because those rights were taken from my people. I don't take for granted now. So every chance I get, a, every chance I get to dance, I, when I'm out there dancing, I'm not me. I don't consider me me because these steps that I have, I didn't invent them. These steps that I have didn't come from me. These steps came from my ancestors, came from those that walked before me or walked this path. So when I dance, I dance for them. All my steps come from them. Everything that I am come from them. So for the times that they weren't able to dance, I dance and I dance with every ounce of fiber. My feet are sore to end the powwows in a good way, but they're sore. Yeah. But I pound them, uh, you know, I pound them for the times they weren't able to get out there and, and, and celebrate or be able to ask for, for gifts from creator. I'm their gift from creator. So I, I make up for lost time. That's awesome. And um, up in your area, how are things looking right now? Are y'all are getting any powwows back or still everything? No, uh, we do. Our people still do some longhouse stuff, uh, but everyone's being really safe. Yeah. Like I haven't even been home. I was wanting to go home and I, our home is up there in Niagara Falls. The Tuscarora Reservation is up there in Niagara Falls. And I wanted to request to go home. And even though, you know, that's where my family is, they don't really encourage me to come back for safety measures. And then I completely understand and, and get that 110%. So, 
so everyone's being really, 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 really cautious and safe and, you know, wearing our masks, washing our, you know, wash our hands. So everything is on the low right now. And a lot of video stuff, just like we're doing now, a lot of video stuff, even our elders are, are just now starting to get their vaccination uh, vaccinations and, you know, things like that. But it, it's basically just like it is everywhere else right now. Everybody's staying low. No powwows have started up. I mean, we don't do we don't do a whole lot of powwows where I'm from. Um, like I said, we're a longhouse people. Uh, so we've not doing any longhouse ceremonies or any a longhouse uh, celebrations or anything like that right now. Yeah, I'm really ready for it to come back. Um, but we got we got to stay safe. And I, yeah, I think we all understand that. Um, too many too many chances that we can't gamble with with our with our lives and our elders' lives. Our oh, absolutely lives. not. I mean, right here in New York, we've lost too many Native elders. Right here, in, right where I'm living now, we have uh kevin tarrant which was the lead singer and owner of a silver cloud uh singers which is an amazing an amazing drum here and he's such a loss to the community and you know and we lost him this past year uh in 2020 and and i can count i couldn't even count on all my hands on how many elders we've lost that are part of the powwow community alone yeah. So I won't chance it. I, I personally won't chance it. Even though I, I miss powwow, I've been invited to one or two little small ones out here. And I just, as much as I miss dancing and I do miss dancing, I need that right now. The pain I'm going through, I, I can't risk, uh, even though I'm a healthy human being, I can't risk getting anybody else sick. I, I just, I find that, you know, I don't care what you believe. My elders' lives are way more important than me dancing. I can dance right here in the living room, which I have a couple of times and posted it on Facebook. Yep. Yep. I've seen those. Yeah. And, and I think we've all done that. You know, it's, it, you got to do what you got to do at home, you know? Um, Absolutely. It's funny. You know, even just um, where technology is now, you know, a year ago, if I, if this interview, if I would have emailed it to you and said, Hey, I, I'm going to send you a zoom link. You know, most people would be like, what? Now, now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got that. Um, yeah. Things are different now, but so, I mean, I might scare my neighbors a little bit when I put the bells on because they're thinking I'm about to dance through the floor. Yeah. But um, I actually, uh, I went out on my roof. I live uh, the second floor and I went out on my roof, my back deck, and I just needed to dance outside and I danced out of my roof and I got through dancing. I was full, full of gear, all my regalia on, everything but my paint. And when I get through dancing, I look around and there's about 60 windows that are around me from different apartments. I, I look around and every window is open and all these windows are open. And I get a, a full applause that's and that cool. lady reached out to me. She goes, I, she's, I don't know what you were doing, but it felt good to watch. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, the same thing with people showing up to powwows for the first time and, and visiting you, you can still get those good feelings. Um, that's really cool. And, and speaking of good feelings, I, I, I do want to spend some time to talking about your other project you have going right now. Uh, I know you started a new Facebook group and doing some incredible things. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. It's my pride and joy right now. It's called Natives Helping Natives, and it's a donation website. Um, you know, we have a lot of native pro, uh, websites out there that you can buy, sell, and trade native goods, which is great. But the thing about it is that sometimes you need and you don't have anything to give. And traditionally, that's the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to give by the kindness of our hearts to people that need. So I wanted to create a site that people wouldn't be afraid to ask for things. I think that's the biggest issue I, I felt on my site is people are afraid to ask because uh, of, of judgment. And I wanted to put a site that if you need something, if you're a Native community and you need something, you need a jacket, you need a bicycle for your kids. If you're hurting for food, all you have to do is go to my Facebook and say, I need. Uh, in the native community and someone will help you. I've, uh, we've gotten like 80, 80 jackets already been sent out to different families, coats and jackets, blankets. Uh, we just had a family that lost their father and people are sending everything from pots and pans, the plates to take care of these kids, um, toys. It's, we have, a, we throw away a lot of good stuff that we don't need. And it's just nonsense. Uh, uh, there we we're the first recyclers there's no reason that we should get away from that it is time for us to start doing that 
yeah, I def definitely think that there's a need there and, and I love that you're filling it. So um, are you, is this open uh, across the country or is this local or, you know, who all can be in, get in this? Well, I first started just very small and I thought it was going to be very small, just, just something local. And it just blew up over th in three days. We had over 1500 members and, and people are already donating things, already donating things. I had a young lady that was in a really bad abusive relationship. She posted. And next thing you know, uh, someone reached out and said, well, I have an extra room. And I didn't even expect for it to get that deep. I really didn't. I know it says native help and natives, but I didn't think it was going to get that personal. Uh, so this, this young lady ended up getting out of this really nasty, abusive relationship and finding a new job, a new place to live and everything from the generosity of this other family. Native people in general are very giving people. We are, I mean, we uh, we give the shirt off of your backs. If you go to any native family's home, you know, you're going to get fed. And, you know, if you're sitting at home and someone visit you from another native family, you know, someone's coming to bring you something, a gift of some sort. And I want to keep that tradition alive because we're losing so much, so many of the old school traditions and this natives helping natives have just really blown me away. The generosity, it just, people are giving out of the kindness of their hearts or a lady reached out to me and she said, well, I have two $500 grocery cards and she just donated them to a family that needed grocery out in um, Lame Deer, Montana, wow. uh, on Lame Deer, uh, Montana reservation. It just proves that we have enough native people that we can count on each other, that we shouldn't be ashamed to ask and we shouldn't be ashamed to give. And that's what the whole page is all about. On my page, you can't sell anything. You can't buy anything. You can't trade anything. The only money that is exchanged is the money for shipping goods. Uh, so if I have something that you want, the only thing, if I don't have the money to ship it to you, I might ask a, you think you can help me pay for shipping? That's the only thing that, that, that's charged on my Facebook page. So uh, the page is open. You come over and I approve you on, you know, what you need. Uh, I ask people to send messages. Hey, I'm in need. Tell me your situation. So, cause a lot of times I give away a lot of my own personal things that I don't need myself. I've given away jackets and blankets and, and household goods myself. So sometimes you, your need might get filled as soon as you send a message. I'm in need of this. No problem. I'll get you to the right people to help you out. Yeah. I, um, there's some, you know, we talked a little bit about before we started recording. There's some great programs out there that, that are helping people and raising millions of dollars. But a lot of those programs also can really get hung up in the, the bureaucracy and the time and, and everything else. Um, I love this because it, it's it's on a very personal level. It's filling an immediate need. Um, you know, like, like we said before we, we started recording, you know, if somebody needs a coat. It's, it, that's something that somebody across the street, across the, the neighborhood or whatever, maybe may have one and you can just bring it over. Um, yep. Yeah, these are these are because some of these are just fundamental ease basic needs that we can fill um without having to have huge bureaucracy i love this i love this and and i'll make sure i put a link to it um and we'll we'll make sure we promote it too on the site and sometimes you have stuff to give and you just don't know who's in need right and i've run myself running into those problems myself it's like man i have these great clothes that are in good shape i don't know who to give them to and and don't get me wrong i don't mind donating to homeless shelters and things like that but I have a lot of people in our own communities that are in need and yeah. I'm going to take care of my own community first uh, because we are the highest, we have the highest level of poverty amongst the, uh, any other uh, ethnicity in, in the United States, highest level of suicide, highest level, level of, of um, uh, hunger. So I want to take care of that first before I just throw it away or just give it to my local homeless shelter if i have a, a person in my native community that needs it i want to ship it out to them yeah yeah and you know here you know in my town and the, the, we've got goodwill and other homeless shelters that are taking donations and, and that's a great place to start but if you can make that connection where somebody really needs that item um yeah it, that that's awesome that's a great thing um love that you started that um so anything else you any um i know you're on Facebook and you're doing a lot of videos. Um, it, so how, how can people find you if they're looking to, to see your, your videos? My name is Patrick Little Wolf Brooks. You can just look me up just like that. It's a picture of me and my, 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 my lovely Emily. 
And um, I'm always looking to make new friends all over the Facebook uh, community. Pretty soon I'll be on the road. I'll be doing a live video. I'm working on a school bus. So uh, doing a schoolie. Uh, and I'm going to hit, now that Emily's walked on, I've decided to, I want to do a, a small mini series called Powwow Highway, where I'm documenting my, my journey from one powwow to the next powwow. Uh, just showing the different uh, communities out there within the powwow community. And that, and hopefully I can get that started around mid-April or not mid-April, uh, late May. And that's kind of my goal right now. Um, I do have a TikTok because everybody's got TikTok now <laughs> where I can uh, just show a little bit of my, my comedic side and just have fun and, and just smile. And that's a huge native, huge native uh, community on TikTok. Which, which I love, but I have our, our company page is Raven's Wing Productions. Uh, we have a Facebook page. It's a Native American, our, we have a Native American educational group that my wife started years ago that I run. That we travel all over the United States, teach about Native history, culture. We bring dancers and educators into the school systems. And instead of kids learning about Native history through a book, we bring it right into the classroom. And not just the dancing, but the actual education side of it, of that we're not just in history. We have native doctors and lawyers and, and professionals in today's society. We don't just all live in the past. We don't all just powwow dance. We have great actors and actresses out there in the community. So that's what that highlights is I bring these people into the, the non-native communities to let people say that it's not all about bone breastplates and war clubs <laughs> yeah there's a lot more to it um and then hopefully here in a few days we'll have uh somebody that, the head of the department of interior even um yeah it, it, she's whatever. getting quizzed right now i have it on my other i'm actually watching it on my other phone as we're talking i have the uh the thing watching deb getting getting um lectured of course and she's smarter than most of the people in that room <laughs> well I don't know. That might not be a whole lot for that room, but yeah. <laughs> that's very true. That's very true. Uh, that's the baseline pretty low. Um, all right, well, cool. Well, th again, thanks so much for being here and thank you for what you're doing with Natives Helping Natives. Um, love that project and I hope we can get more people involved in that and filling those needs. Thanks so much, man. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So I hope you enjoyed that time we got to spend with Patrick and hear some of his stories. Uh, again, I want to thank him for his time and, and coming on and telling, talking about that. Um, I thank him for his service too. Uh, it, it's great to see um, veterans coming back and, and making a difference like he is. Um, that Native Helping Natives, Natives Helping Natives Facebook group, I, I did link it. It's in the first comment on this video. So please go check that out um, and get involved. It's it's an incredible idea and I'm um I'm so blown away by his effort there in, in putting this together and it's going to make some real connections and fill some, some real needs for people. So that's awesome. Um, lots of comments out there. I really appreciate everybody watching. Um, and if you liked this, I uh, want to do more of these. So if, if you like hearing these stories, let me know and, and I'll, I'll work on see if we can get some other dancers and other dance styles and, and tell more stories like this. So let me know if you, if you enjoyed that, um, post it in the comments or, or send me an email over at uh, webmaster at powwows.com. Um, all right, so a couple other reminders of what we've got going on. It would uh, We do got our merchandise sale going on, 15% off, shirts like this. Uh, again, I'll show here's our one of our masks. And we're going to be wearing these masks for a little bit longer at least. And here's another little thing we've got. Uh, there. I always do this backwards. See, I do that backwards too. There we go. Um, so check those out. 15% off now through the end of the month. Um, and uh, yeah, and so and if you want to follow along with Powell's.com, of course, make sure you follow us on social media. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter and, and check our calendar often. Uh, we are posting new events on the calendar as soon as we get them. Some are virtual. Some, are, some live events are starting to post on the calendar. So there are going to be some coming up this summer and fall. Hopefully, you know, we'll all be able to, those will actually happen um, and things will continue to improve. So let's all stay safe, keep our masks on, social distance and do what we can. And let's get back to powwowing and dancing together um, real soon. Again, thanks everybody for watching. Thank you again, Patrick, for being on. Really enjoyed um, 
listening to that again, it was, it was fun. It, it was fun doing it and talking with him, but it was even better uh, sitting back now and tonight and getting to, to watch that interview. So have a good night and a good weekend, everybody. We are live every Thursday night on Facebook and YouTube. So check us out and come back and see another episode of Pow Wow Live next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.